John chapter 19. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. And as you read in Mark, part of the whipping that Jesus got was also from Pilate. I don't know why he would, he would scourge an innocent man unless he just gives over to the politics of the people and to the politics of the religion. That would be 39 stripes. Isaiah 52, 13. And the soldiers plaited, that means they sewed together, they weaved together a crown of thorns. They took thorns and weaved them as a mockery crown to a mockery Jew of mockery of a king. Remember, the charge finally came out, king of the Jews. These Roman soldiers are under the guide and under the authority of Caesar. And they're going to bring this man to a cross to die. <laughs> You're some kind of king, aren't you? Boy, wait till they find out the great white throne judgment. What kind of king Jesus is. And put it on his head. And they put on him a purple robe. So Hollywood glamatizes a Roman robe in the movie The Robe and searching for, you know, the robe. That robe would be taken off. That robe, according to Acts 20:28, 20, would have the blood of God on it. If you could find that robe and the linen that Jesus wore when, when he died, was buried, and put that under a microscope, which you're not going to find. You imagine what, what amazing scientists would find. But faith is evidence of things not seen. You're never going to find that blood of Jesus here. And said, Hail, King of the Jews. And that's not worshiping. That's not honoring. That's putting down. That's teasing. If you're, going, if you're a king, stop us from bringing you to the cross. And they smote him with their hands. Plural. Hands. Notice a king, not fisherman, not carpenter. King. Pilate therefore went forth again and said unto them, Behold! I bring him forth to you that ye may know that I find no fault in him. Number two. Twice. So what Pilate does by beating him, he brings this bloody, massed man in purple, in with a crown of thorns before the Jews that, all right, they're going to be a please. They're going to be satisfied. They'll be content. They'll let him go. Then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate said unto them, Behold the man. Study Pilate. You know what Pilate's sin was? Uh, yeah, rejecting Jesus Christ. Oh, yes, that's everyone's sin that go off in hell. But you know what his, his main sin that caused his trouble he was a people pleaser. He had pleased him. He says, it says in the scriptures, in the gospel, he knew for envy that those priests brought Jesus to him. And yet he does not let Jesus go. Yet he's got an innocent person standing before him in a criminal judgment. And he beats Isaiah 53 in the Bible. In uh, Isaiah... I gave you the one before. I lost where that reference is. Where they plowed his back. Isaiah 52, 13. This is an innocent man. That he is beaten. 39 stripes. And with those 39 stripes, Pilate comes out to the Jews as a testimony and say, Behold the man. 
Pilate knew something. But because of the fear of the people. When the chief priests therefore and officers saw him. They cried out saying crucify him. Crucify him. That's not in the law. The law says stoning. So again, now they're in violation of the law again, but they're going to take part of the Passover. And they'll take her, take over the Passovers until the day they drop off and fall off to hell. Righteously. I mean, we can't go into that judgment hall because it will ruin our testimony. Pilate says unto them, Take ye him. And crucify him, for I find no fault, number three, in him. All right, Jews, take him. And Pilate says, to fulfill the law, you take him and go crucify him. Don't you take him and go stone him. If you see the message that God has given Pilate to these Jews, then you don't understand the inspiration of the Bible and the Holy Spirit for even a lost man to speak. And another thing, Pilate wants Jesus off his hands. The Jews answered, we have a law. And by our law, he ought to die because he made himself the son of God. Number one, that would be stoning. No, nope, that would violate the law. Number two, they just admitted. They just admitted before a heathen judge, they knew exactly who Jesus Christ was. Even though the Jehovah Witnesses don't believe it. This is found in Leviticus 24, 16. They knew exactly. Remember the other times they picked up stones to stone him? They knew exactly. How come this charge wasn't brought to Pilate the first time? Every time we've read in the Gospels, they, well, what's the accusation? Mm, beating around the bush. Here's the accusation. Notice they didn't even bring up the Sabbath. Pilate would not care. He would not have anything to do with that. He would not have the Son of God. He just added that to his gods, Roman gods, Roman mythology. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was more afraid. Now, why would he be all of a sudden afraid of this saying? Do you realize what Pilate has witnessed by Jesus Christ? This man has been abused. He has been uh, charged guilt, being innocent. He's had the worst 24 hours of his entire life. And he stands there in proper respect, in proper attitude, in proper being a man. And has not asked for justice, has not scolded back, has not gotten angry. This man now has been proclaimed to Pilate. Not only is he just a king, but now he's God. I wonder what kind of conversation his wife has been having with him this whole time. I wonder how much Pilate knew of the Jewish scriptures. And went again into the judgment hall and says unto Jesus, Whence art thou? Now this is not what city you are. Where were you taxed? This is a heavenly question. Where did you come from? And since Pilate has beaten him innocently, tried to turn him, has done everything he could to reject Jesus, but Jesus gave him no answer. And I think that's where the point is, where Pilate did not ever get saved. I don't know. Because if it was truly a question, a right question. Now we've done Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We have seen people ask Jesus questions. We have seen him answer. 
Now, show me in the Gospels, the life of Jesus, where somebody seriously asked Jesus a question and he rejected them. You say that woman there, the, the Sarcesian woman. Well, she first addressed him as a Jewish Messiah, being a Gentile. But then when she addressed him as Lord God of all the world, all the nations, of all the earth, all in all, then he answered her. Pilate, at this point, he does not want to know him. Remember he said, what is truth, and walked away. That'd be like you witnessing somebody and say, hey, you, you open the Bible with them, and, and what is all that? And they just go away. Then said Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Oh, there's, there's authority. Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee? And have power to release thee? Oh, look at the power. Look at the reign. Look at who I am. Look at the pride. Pilate thinks he's in control. And remember, Jesus is standing before Pilate right now in a broken body. He might be still wearing the crown of thorns in the, in the purple robe. Bleeding. Agony. And Pilate's looking at him like, I'm the boss. You better get down and kiss my ring, kiss my toes, kiss my butt, and I'll let you go. Now, what do you think kind of attitude in verse 10 that Pilate's going to get from God? There's no repentance. The power is the greed of the people. And then Jesus answered. Jesus answered. Thou could have no power at all against me. God has the power. Except they were given, given thee from above God. Therefore, he that delivered me unto thee has the greater sin. Caiaphas. There are two wicked known sinners that Jesus mentions in the Gospels. Judas and Caiaphas. Judas sold him out. Caiaphas hands him over. And Judas is foretold in the scriptures. Exactly every deed that he done. And I would go so far to say in the book of Exodus. That Caiaphas was prophesied because from that first night that the lamb was to be slain it was to be done no, it can't be Exodus there was no high priest when Israel left, left Egypt and the law was written after Exodus 20 then when God gave it all to Moses and it was they sat there and they learned the law and they heard what Leviticus they heard what the law spoke to them and concerning this Passover which is to be a time every year when the priest would take that lamb and slay that lamb and then John comes up and speaks behold the lamb of God it was the high priest that was to slay that lamb and here it is both Judas and and Caiaphas would have the greater sin. And from thenceforth, Pilate sought to release him. That's interesting. But who had the power over Pilate? Not God, the people. And Caesar but the Jews cried out saying if thou let this man go thou art not Caesar's friend whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar the Jews knew right where they at this would probably be the the damnation if, if Pilate never got saved this would probably be the damnation of Pilate he wants power and if he offends Caesar, he'll get death. James 4 4 with this passage. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat 
in a place that is called the pavement before but I'm excuse me but in Hebrew Gabbatha you realize how long this trial has been going on you realize the patience and long-suffering of God Jesus Christ his body has been broken he's got part of his beard missing he's been buffeted he's been slammed in the face he's been whipped he's been bruised he's been spitted upon thorns are still in his head you ever get one of those thorns in your finger and it just throbs you get a toothache and you're trying to sleep at night and just boom, boom, boom. His whole body. I can't even agonize the pain that he suffered for me. And he's standing there. And Pilate, take him to Calvary. You can't understand that this is a Superman. This is a superhero. This is what this junk that people buy a comic book about. No one could take this pain. And we read in, we read in Mark when Joseph Armia came and claimed the body of Jesus. And Mar Pilate marveled that he had dead. You weren't supposed to die on that cross. You were supposed to suffer. And Jesus told him, you don't have the power. God does. And Jesus, in the, in, I'm not going to quote completely in the four Gospels, Jesus gave up the ghost. Not man. And it was the preparation of the Passover. Yes, it is. In the judgment hall. There it is. Do you like how those words are? We've been in the judgment hall of Pilate and we go, and it's the preparation of the Passover. Yeah, there's the lamb. Do you know what they were supposed to do in Exodus and every year that Passover? I think it's Seven days, was it? You know what they were supposed to do? The seven last days of Jesus' life? They were to examine that one lamb. I don't see no mange. I don't see no bruises. Look at me, lamb. Your eyes are correct. Smile. Smile. Teeth are good. I don't know how they would examine for the inside, make sure everything is like... Pilate is playing the high priest of Israel, making sure that lamb. And when he sends that lamb off to be crucified, he says four to five times, I find no fault in him. Herod said, I find no fault in him. Judas says, I have betrayed the innocent blood. That lamb of God, which take away my sin, which take away the sin of the world, has been proclaimed on his last seven days worthy to die for the nation. How's that? We go from, I said, don't you realize we've been in the judgment and we go and preposition, I mean conjunction. To fulfill what chapter, what verses 1 through 13 and it was a preparation of the Passover. And there stands the lamb. And about the sixth hour, and he says unto the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Because of envy. This is all because Jesus got the crowds. All because Jesus was 100% truth. He never told a lie. This is because all that Jesus done fulfilled everything the will of God up to this point. And he's going to fulfill it all the way through. And you're going to tell me the best men, the good men in the world win? Jesus wins by the will of the Father. And Pilate says unto him, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. And in Rome, 70 AD comes and destroys Jerusalem under a man named Titus. There's your king. And guess who runs around now in Jerusalem? Say you, you worldly Christians if you come over here this is where Jesus lied oh no you guys are lying 
Oh, if you come over here, this is this is the head of John the Baptist. This is where Jesus was crucified. Wait a minute, excuse me. Hold on, I've got the picture, Mr. Black Robe Man. I'm not supposed to call him Father. I thought the Bible said he died outside the gate. See, you know you got Rome is running around in Jerusalem today. They're being ruled Israel by the United Nations. The United Nations has said last week, we do not recognize Jerusalem, the Temple Mount, as property of the Jews, but of Allah and all his followers. That, was, that came out last week. That piece of news, I do believe. We have no king but Caesar. The last words recorded by Pilate. Shall I crucify your king? One thing I know about Pilate through the four Gospels, we're, we're done going to be studying about Pilate. He, he's, he's now history. He's going to show up a couple more times with it. He knew one thing. He knew Jesus was a king. That didn't save him. Then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. In between 7, 16 and 17 put Luke 23, 25 to 32. And he bearing his cross went forth unto a place unto a place called the skull. This would be Genesis 22, very location where Abraham and Isaac the place that Isaac carried his own wood. Remember that? Here comes Jesus carrying his own wood. Would be you know, I don't know what it is. I'm not even gonna get but wouldn't it be interesting if Isaac carried the same kind of tree that Jesus carried? Wouldn't it just be interesting? The place of the of a skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha. And when they had crucified him, and two other with him, on either side one, and Jesus in the midst. There's the picture right there. So the three crosses with Jesus in the middle, middle is scriptural. Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross. It is written, Jesus of Nazareth. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. We got a problem. Verse 9. Whence art thou? He knew where Jesus lived physically. Don't give me this junk, Pilate. Whence did you come from? You knew exactly where he came from. You called the rolls. You searched out that man standing before you. How did you know he was Nazareth? You wanted a heavenly answer, and you rejected it. The king of the Jews. Oh, we do have one more thing that Pilate says. Well, actually, we no, Pilate will say he marveled. So that's not the last words, but I, I stand corrected. This title then read many the Jews. Ooh, that angered them. For the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city, Hebrews 13, 12. He died outside the gate. Some of those sacrifices that were on the altar were brought outside the gate. The scapegoat was brought outside the gate and let loose. So that's a particular interesting study in the Old Testament. What happened outside the gates? He didn't die in the city. And it was written in Hebrew for the Jews. For Seth and Greek for the world that's around the Romans that are there for Japheth and Latin for the colored man of Africa and for Ham. Latin is an African language that went north. So look at that. You got Noah's boys mentioned in 20. Then said the chief priest of the Jews to Pilate, Right, not that the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. 
They didn't like that accusation. But that wasn't the true accusation. Wouldn't it be great if Pilate wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the Son of God, God himself? He didn't believe it, did he? He just believed he was a king. That's not good enough to get to heaven. Not good enough. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. He's convinced, but not converted. Well, Jesus is a wonderful man. That ain't going to save you. Jesus was a great teacher. That won't save you. So we come to another part in the Gospel of John that about salvation. You can believe whatever you believe about Jesus. If you don't believe he's God and you don't believe that he's the way of salvation, the only way of salvation, you'll die and go to hell. But Jesus, didn't we? Imagine how many people in the Gospel of John, the Gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they'll say, Lord, didn't we walk? Didn't we see you? Didn't we touch you? Didn't we? Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Pilate stood in front of Jesus. I'm not Jesus standing in front of Pilate. I'm Pilate stood in front of Jesus, God. Jesus doing the will set by the Father. And one day Jesus may say to this man called Pilate, may be his judge one day, depart from me. But Lord, didn't I? You, you didn't do nothing for me. <laughs> you didn't do nothing at all. But you did fulfill the Pilate fulfilled the scriptures. Yes, he did. He'll go to hell if he didn't believe on Jesus. Judas, Judas fulfilled the scriptures. And the Bible already tells us he went to hell because he never repented and got right. Oh, he ran to the priest and repented and still went to hell. So don't give me your garbage. Don't give me your plans. Don't give me your ideas. Don't give me your beliefs. Because if it's not Jesus Christ, God, then there's no salvation. Oh, I have written what I have written. He's convinced. That's a king. Then the soldiers, when they crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to every soldier apart. So there's four parts of his clothes. Uh, of the four soldiers, everyone got to take home a souvenir, a booty. I'm trying to think of the Old Testament word now. I can't. I, just, I hate when those words come to mind. They take off as, as lightning. Spoil. This is a spoil of war. Do you realize God allowed Nebuchadnezzar and his Babylonian army to go to Egypt and sack Egypt? Because Babylon did not get no booty from Jerusalem. And in Jeremiah, I think you find, or Jeremiah or Ezekiel. He said, I will allow Babylon to go into Egypt and they'll get their wages for what they did to me, for me, in Jerusalem. So th this is a war prize. Honey, what'd you do today? Oh, we crucified this man, the king of the Jews. Really? What'd you bring home? I got his shorts or whatever. Oh, they look like they'll fit Junior. Okay, let me wash them. I got his cloak in another house. I got his cloak. Oh, okay. Hey, that looks like it'll fit me. All right, take it. Do you realize somebody walked around in this land after Jesus died with Jesus' clothes? Four of them. Four pieces of clothes. Can they go up to God and say, God, I got your underpants. And God says, okay, come into heaven. You got my underpants. Well, the Mormons say they got holy underwear. What more holy underwear could you have than the ones that Jesus wore? And that won't get you into heaven. Having the clothes of Jesus. Because I say that because the Catholics are all about that shroud, not a shroud, whatever. I could have the shroud right now and have you look at it and be able to see it and touch it and all that. That's not going to get you to heaven. These guys went home with Jesus' clothes. The sweat and the blood of God on those clothes. Now, wouldn't you like to see that? I would. I don't know what holy blood looks like. But it ain't going to do me no good for salvation. So who cares? But they parted for. Now watch this one. As soon as I find where I am. And his coat. Now the coat was without seam. Woven from the top throughout. When you get the picture of the four gospels, this is like a poncho. It spreads out and it's got the hole, you know, where you slide over your head. They got four men and they got a problem. They got five pieces of clothes. 
what are we going to do with the fifth, the fifth item? And they said there amongst themselves, let us not rend it. We're not going to rip it. It's too good. Look at this thing. This thing's nice. But cast lots for it. So we're going to shoot dice, draw straws, whatever, how the Romans do it. Somebody's going to go home with that, with that coat by dice. Gambling. Yes, there's gambling in the Bible. They shot whatever they did or do for the coat of Jesus. Let's not rend it, but cast lots for it. Whose it shall be? That the scripture might be fulfilled, which saith, They parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. These things, therefore, the soldiers did. Look at that. These soldiers did scripture. They performed a, a, a prophecy about Jesus Christ, and they still, without Jesus Christ, they'll die and go to hell. They can walk up to God and say, God, the scripture says that we had to part your garments. Psalms 22, 18. But did you believe on my son? No, we didn't. But we got a garment. We parted this. Look, I got. I ended up with a, with a coat. Drew the biggest straw. Yeah, you can go into the deepest hell. But Lord, I fulfilled the scripture. So you see all the salvation misses. And it's not concentrated on the one that dies for us. It's not concentrated on the lamb. It's all about that lamb. Now there, now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, Mary. And his mother's sister. He had an aunt. Yeah, Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. She shows up a lot. She was a favorite of Jesus. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples stand by whom he loved, we know that is John, later on in John. John is there at the cross. John is here telling us the story. He saith unto his mother, Woman, oh, look at that, still calling her woman. Behold thy son. Mary has no control. Behold me, mother. Behold me, woman. This is the reason why you gave birth to me, woman. Remember Luke chapter 2 or 3? It was prophesied. It was for two that Mary would stand here and watch her son die. Now let me ask you a question here. Where does it say Mary had the power to take her son off the cross? Come on, Mary's all powerful. I mean, come on, mothers, you're going to hear this video. If you saw your son in complete agony and you had all power of power that you can have power to be, wouldn't you do something for your son? And if Mary's so good with all the power that she's been given by the Catholic Church, absolutely does nothing for Jesus. Now, I'm stepping to Mar the Catholic Mary, not Mary, the true mother of Jesus. I'll step for the Catholic. Woman, I can think of some names for you I can't say. If you if you had all power to help your son and didn't help him. I can't say those names. But as far as Mary, the mother of Jesus, She's defenseless right now. Something happened to Joseph. We don't know whatever it was. We have no idea. But he's not there. He's out of the picture. And Jesus says, just read a little bit further. He says, saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took her unto his own home. So something with Joseph. He's out of the picture. Mary is completely defenseless. Jesus, one of the last things he says on that cross, John, take care of my mom. He sure can't rely on his brothers and sisters. They don't believe until later. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Chapter 7, verse 38. That's what he said to the woman at the well. And an entire city got saved. Those disregarded Jews. You know, the Samaritans. 
Psalm 69, 21, Luke 16, 24. Now there was set a ves vessel full of vinegar. All right. You're out in the hot sun. It is hot. Very hot. You've seen pictures of Jerusalem, how hot it can get. And you want you want something to drink. Vinegar? Really? Oh, honey, you've been working that garden all afternoon. Oh, look, you're just, you know, you're sweating. You could touch me till you take a shower. I brought you a glass of vinegar. What? It's cold. <laughs> can you just see your teeth like, oh, oh. Vinegar. Psalm 69, 21, Luke 16, 24. You didn't think that was in the scripture, did you? Uh... Um, what did Moses say to God? Said you're to eat that land with bitter herbs, and they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it upon hyssop. Uh oh, Exodus 22 12. There's the hyssop. We're getting ready to come and dine with Jesus. That lamb, you're not going to eat this lamb, but don't you see the recipe? Don't you see the meal that the Jews were to eat that night? Hyssop, bitter herbs. The lamb's going to be slain. It's going to be broiled. Jesus goes into hell. He gets broiled. Doesn't burn, but he gets broiled. And I think does it, um, something about the law that says you weren't supposed to sod it in water. Was that, I have to check, but I think something about you weren't supposed to do water with it. So Jesus on this cross said, I thirst. They're not supposed to give him water. If somebody said, oh, Jesus, I feel so sorry for you. I, I love you so much. Here's water. They would, they would, they would have not fulfilled the scriptures and ruined the whole thing. So if you were there and you loved Jesus and you gave him a drop of water to drink, you would have done injustice to the law. And we all die and go to hell. Because we are told by Luke, a man in hell says, I thirst and I get nothing. When they put that lamb in the fire and when they put this lamb on the cross, it's going through the fire. This one, he comes through the fire like Shadrach, Meshach, Indigo. And according to that scripture, Jesus has already been in the fire because he was in there with them. So this is nothing new for Jesus to go through hellfire. And go through fire. He's already in it in Daniel. And what was the remarkable thing said about Daniel about the, the, the three boys or men, whatever it was? So Not only that, didn't it say that their clothes were intact and he didn't even smell? Jesus didn't even end up with his clothes. How's that sound? His clothes were auctioned and given away by the Roman soldiers. And yet he shows up in the upper room. He shows up in the garden to Mary. And he's clothed. When we get to heaven, we get clothes. How's that? Heavenly clothes that never need a laundromat. Here he's naked before all the world. So he says, woman, behold thy son. How clean can I be? Everything's hanging out. Mary had not seen any of that part of Jesus since the time that he learned how to use the bathroom and change himself. When the diapers came off and, and the clothes came on, that was it for Mary seeing the nakedness of Jesus. And here he is, 33 and a half years old. And Mary, oh. Let's get reality now. Let's look at the cross the way it is. How would you like to hang naked for all the world? Not me. Sorry. I'll tell you about Jesus. I'll preach about Jesus. There's only one right now that can see my nakedness. And God sees my nakedness. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he didn't taste it, he received it, took it up. He said, it is finished. This is the last words of Jesus on the cross. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Jesus is in control. Pilate had nothing to do with his death. 
in Mark when it's told that they want the body of Jesus. Pilate, what? He's dead? Great power you got, Pilate. The Jews, therefore, because it was a preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day. For that Sabbath day was a high day. It turns out to be a Wednesday. This is not the Saturday Sabbath because it says it's a high day. And you can't have a Good Friday and an Easter Sunday morning according to three days and three nights. God just told you, see that parentheses? You see parentheses in the Bible? This is an extra, no, extra, I can't say, extraordinary, extra, this is a great message I'm going to teach you. This is a very important message. That Sabbath was a high day. That wasn't the Saturday Sabbath. So you didn't read your Bible. Maybe it's not in your Bible. Maybe that's been taken away. Why you believe in Good Friday? Now, I've been in Baptist churches. Good Friday. You're wrong. Sing a song. They, they play this one song, one Baptist church where about some great guy sang about in three days and he mentioned Friday. You can't get it. You're wrong. My daughter came to me today with some strange math. Maybe that math you can do it. But not the Bible math. There you go. There's your answer, Rachel, right there. That's, that's the, it's the Roman Catholic kind of Roman garbage Satan math. That's what it is. Be, be sought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Oh, Deuteronomy 1932. You mean the Jews have been giving the disciples and Jesus a hard time about working on the Sabbath once the Roman government to take these guys down and break their legs. Isn't that work? Isn't that work, guys? You religious, hypocritical morons. You've been sassing Jesus three and a half years and your last words are, take those bodies down. That's a Sabbath. You can't do that. Then came the soldiers and break the legs of the first. And the other, which was crucified with him, the two thieves. Remember, one lost thief, one righteous thief. The Christ righteousness. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, that was not supposed to happen. You did not die on the cross. You suffered on the cross. It would take many days. And have birds guard you out. Jesus is in complete control and Jesus gave himself up. So birds would not eat him. So that his body won't discompose and the bones break as the body discomposed. To fulfill scripture. Well, when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was dead already and they break not his leg. Matthew 27, 54. Because you can't break a leg of him scripture but one of the soldiers with us with a spear and this spear is always mentioned we got to find that spear of Jesus whoever holds that spear holds all the world that spear Genesis 2 23 pierced his side and forthwith came there out blood and water Blood and water. 1 John 5, 6, and 8. Now, according to medical doctors, I, I'm not a medical doctor, I don't have no degree, but this is what... That, what happened with the result of that spirit and the blood and water coming out is a sign of a heart attack of a broken heart. That's what they say. I don't want to read more into it, but that's interesting information. Then, Jesus died of a broken heart. His nation turned on him. His people gave him up. And remember in the garden, he prayed that sin, that cup. My God, my God, why God had forsaken him. They talk about mother's broken heart over the children. You and he did not have a broken heart like Jesus had. Not one person was with him or for him. And he that saw it bared record. Who was there? Who was recorded 
John, he that soweth bared record, and his record is true, and he knows that he saith true, that ye might believe. John is telling us, an eyewitness of the cross, that you may believe. The writer of the gospel we are reading now said, I saw that. Not only did I see him die on a cross, I saw them take that spear and pierce it. That's why Matthew didn't record it. Matthew was not there. That's why Mark didn't record it. Mark wasn't there. That's why Luke, the medical doctor, didn't record it, because he wasn't there. Peter's not there. But we saw on the record that Jesus said, John, take my mother. Why? Because John's going to say, I was there. And John's record will stand for all eternity. I saw them pierce his side. I saw them declare him dead. Don't tell me they put him in the tomb and the cold of the rock made him, I'm alive. Yes, they do say that. They say that Jesus just passed out with great pain. He should have done that in Pilate's judgment hall. And he that saw record bared record, and his record is true. And he knows that he says true that ye might believe. That's why John wrote. He's going to say that later. For these things were done that the scriptures should be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. Exodus 12, 46. Numbers 9, 12. Psalm 34, 20. That's why they did not break the legs, but pierced his side. When they pierced that side, blood and water, Acts 20, 28 says, the blood of God spilled out on the ground on that spear, maybe on the soldier's hands. That soldier had a spear with Acts 20, 28, the blood of God, and yet if he never believed on Jesus Christ, he'd go to hell just as much as anybody else. So if you had the literal blood of Jesus on that spear or drink it, whatever you want to do, it ain't going to do you no good. It ain't going to do you no good. I can't find the literal blood of Jesus Christ today. Even if I went over there with a shovel. It ain't going to do me no good if I had it. And after this, Joseph of Arimea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for the fear of the Jews. Okay, so. <laughs> enough said. Besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him leave. That's a military term. A sailor gets leave. That means he can go to town. He can go home. He can go wherever he wants to go. He doesn't have to do his duty. He's relieved of duty. You're allowed. It's a permission. It's a pass. You used to be called a, a weekend pass. There are other different names of pass, but it's allowed. It's a given liberty. He came, therefore, and took the body of Jesus. There came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night, what we started the Gospel of John with, and brought a mixture of myrrh, aloes, about a hundred pounds worth. I got a note here, 2 Corinthians 16, 14 for some reason. Maybe something interesting to check out with that. I got these notes in here and I made the notes. and Then took they the body of Jesus. The body of Jesus, not Jesus. He's, he's, he's gone. He's gone down in the heart of the earth. He's busy. That's just the body. The spirit went back to God. The soul is now in the earth. Or he said, as Noah, I mean, as uh, Jonah was in the heart of the earth, so will I be in the heart of the well, so will I be in the heart of the earth. And wound it in linen clothes, not a shroud. Uh-oh. It did not say shroud. So whenever you hear about that shroud of Jesus, that's a lie according to the scriptures. John says, and he recorded, it was clothes with spices. As the manner of the Jews is to bury. That's always been the manner of the Jews. Thank. I don't want to say thank God. But for Lazarus. It's great that they didn't do the Egyptian way. Involved him. Because Lazarus would come out of the grave with no more brains. And no more stomach and all that. And he would not be having a dinner with Jesus. That's how they would bury the Jews. Wrap them in linen with spices and all that. Make it smell a little pretty. Because Martha told us. Man four days he stinks. Even with all the cinnamon, yeah, he stinks. This is something they did. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden. So he prays in the garden to the Father. He is buried in the garden. And man, 
and his wife was driven out of the garden. The second Adam goes back to a garden before and after the crucifixion. Oh, wait a minute. The second Adam, the first Adam had a problem with a, with, with a tree, didn't he? Had a problem with a tree. The second Adam was crucified on a tree. Both before and after that tree, he was in a garden. Okay. I'm going to get that straight. And in the garden, a new sepulcher, which wherein was never man yet laid. Genesis 2 8, 2 15, John 20, verse 15. There laid they Jesus. Therefore, because of the Jews' preparation day, for the sepulchre was nigh at hand. You gotta hurry up. The Sabbath is coming. The Passover is coming. We can't do no work but go ahead and break their legs. We can't finish Jesus' body. Because this high day, this high Sabbath is happening. So that's why those women are going to come back Sunday morning. They got to finish winding Jesus up. Because he hasn't been fully, he has not been fully wound yet. 